My name is Boyd Sharp. I'm 39 years old. I'm an IT guy. Working in an office all day, and uh, I am in the biggest rut. I need a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and uh, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Boyd has no background in mixed martial arts, but somehow he came up with the idea of, hey, I want to try this. Here we go, here we go. Oh, yeah. Come hard here, let's go. Yeah. I've never been in a fight in my entire life, but in one year, I'm going to get in a mixed martial arts cage and fight a professional fight. Yeah. You better get up and fight. When I told people that I was going to do yeah. this, they said, A, you're nuts, and B, can I come too? You better get up and fight. I'm just trying to show that ordinary people, when they put their minds to it, can do extraordinary things. There's less than two days until fight night for Boyd, Steve, and Rick. A year ago, Peter Martel started with 250 cubes, and the group has been whittled down to these three 40-year-olds who will fight professionally for the first time. Both Boyd and Steve are already at their fight weight, but Rick took this fight with one day's notice and has to cut 15 pounds in 24 hours in order to qualify. It's not looking good. If he's that bad, we gotta stop. He missed weight by 9.8 pounds. Does someone want to have a frank, heart-to-heart, -heart, serious conversation with him and say, listen, if you're this bad, I'll call him right now, I'll call the fight off. Everyone else did a weight cut nine months ago. Rick chose to ignore it. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a talk first. Pete said, if you're this bad, you're not going to make it. And if you're not going to make it, we got to call that guy and tell him so he doesn't do a weight cut unnecessarily. And he said, if you're having this much trouble right now, you need to decide whether or not you can do this. Rick started at 160 pounds and has to cut down to 145. Your first weight cut is unbelievably difficult, as you have to starve yourself from food and water for 24 hours while you generate as much heat as possible. Unless you can, like, show me that you're going to be stronger, we may as well stop right now. Like, you got you got to show me something here. You can't be this bad nine pounds out. The first five pounds were the easy pounds. Those last, last five pounds are gonna be hard. Do you understand what I'm saying? One, two, quick. Come on, come on, one more, let's go. Let's go, come on. Rick, we're gonna end up stopping if you don't respond. Come on. If you're out of it, we're gonna stop. If you're... <laughs> Control your breathing. Oh, f One, fifty-four. Lost point six. I told you, she gets hurt. She does get hurt. She gets hurt back. He's not moving enough to keep his body temperature up. He's got to keep it up so he'll keep sweating. So we're going to put him in the sauna so he does. If you can't walk on your own, you may as well not go in the sauna. You'll sit in the sauna for half an hour, you'll lose a tenth of a pound, and then we'll have to throw your body in a dumpster. You're not going to make it. You have to be able to show me something. Stand up, walk on your own, be strong. Here, OK? Here. Don't break here or here. Come on. You're doing awesome. You want to do a half hour? Okay. It's now near midnight, and his teammate's support is constant. Nikki would have been the fourth cube to fight on the card, but pulled out. She didn't think she was ready. Even though you know I got to do the year training, I don't. I don't necessarily think a year training is necessarily enough. The other guys taking the fight and they think it's enough, then good on them. Then that's their decision. They're ready. The truth is, after training for a year, depending on who you're fighting, you're not ready. But the premise of this was, I'm going to train for a year and have a fight. So we take you along the journey. At the end of the year, you say, OK, you're at this level, you're ready to fight. Some people won't want to fight until they're at this level. Some people, it doesn't matter what level they're at, they, they won't fight. Stay up here for another couple of minutes. Sit up. Come on. Sit, sit, sit on the chair. Come on. You're good. No, you're not. Not looking good. After six excruciating hours of cutting, Rick is finished for the night. He still has nine pounds to go to get to 145.
Rick suffered badly throughout the night, but sleep has given him renewed life. It's now been 19 hours without food or water. He reacted really well this morning to the uh, cardio and the, and the sauna, and we haven't weighed him yet. We want to do one more sauna session, but I'm betting he's down another pound, pound and a half. Come on, 59. 46.8! Woo! That's unbelievable. Wow, I walked in here to a shock. 146.8. Woo! So close. He's now less than two pounds away from making weight, but the last few pounds are typically the hardest to lose. Rick is somebody who always wanted to be self-sufficient. He wants to answer to himself and himself alone and over the course of this program, he was put in a number of situations where he couldn't do it alone. He needed a team, he needed friends, he needed people that he could rely on. I just don't feel like I'm very long, boy, like I just... cracking now. It's all good, man. really humbled and I'm honored right now and uh, I'm embarrassed in my my old attitude of just me because I don't I couldn't do this with just me I, I couldn't do it with those guys supporting me Steve took care of me last night he took me home and I really didn't even know what planet I was on to be honest I couldn't have done it without him and uh, I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of myself, my way of thinking. You know, this is a team sport. I didn't realize it until now, but it is. Rick is on the second day of his weight cut and his third hour in the sauna this morning. He's lost 13 pounds in just over 12 hours, but the last two pounds are proving to be the hardest. He has five hours until the official weigh-in. Steve-o. Hey, Zach. Hey, hey, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Did you just get in? Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. It is. Uh, looking small. Just a, <laughs> yeah, I am small. You're really small. Hey, Rick, we got a visitor, man. You with us, bud? Yeah. yeah? Your back is completely covered in sweat. So we need to do it like this and scrape all this water off him. Okay. You able to sit up uh, so Zach can do your back, bud? Yeah. You able to sit up so Zach can do your back? He's here behind me. How you doing? That's <laughs> <laughs> That's that's not true. He's doing absolutely amazing. All right, just sit back on your bum, Rick. Just put your legs out in front of you. And then you can just lean forward a little bit and Zach will be able to get at your back. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Oh, you're gonna make it too far away. Too far out. 15 pounds. <laughs> 15 pounds. It's crazy. Totally dry too. Here, dry yourself off. Yeah, you weren't dry.
ماذا؟ مين هلا هيك؟ مالم هيك مالم هيك مالم هيك Hello, Peter. It's Boyd. I am well, sir. Yourself? Uh, Rick's got something to tell you. What's that? 144.6. <laughs> Pretty sure Peter tried at one point or another to crush everybody out of this program. Push yourself! Come on! Come on! That's it! That's the way! That's the way! Quit. I'm gonna cut you or step the f*** up. Oh, you guys think it's a fucking joke? Move it! Let's go! It seems staged that you would take 30 people, some of them pretty accomplished athletes, and a lot of them very young and energetic, and you get to the end and there's three 40-year-olds fighting. It's just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Being the accountant, I, of course, developed a spreadsheet, and I would rank them and color code people as to the most likely to fight at the end of this. I never once had either myself, Boyd, or Rick on there as being one of the people that I was confident were going to fight. Let's go. If you look at how many fans showed up to try out for this thing, and how many fans sit there and watch it on television and say, oh, yeah, I could do that, or I could do that. No, you can't. No, you can't. And I shouldn't be able to. But, man, I'm here, and I'm getting through it, and I'm not going to quit. And the odds are stacked against these guys. Let's face it, they're in their 40s. They've been training for a year. They're fighting guys half their age who uh, are going to be faster, stronger, have better cardio. Whether they win or lose, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they're, they're going to be champions. It seems inconceivable that the program would be left with three 40-year-olds fighting. But this proves the unpredictability of MMA. Sebastian was ready to fight, but lost his opponent. Nikki had an opponent, but chose not to fight. And Chad, Robin, and Ashley made it to the end, but Peter felt they weren't quite ready. Regardless, it's the three old guys who will represent the entire program. The fact that they are over 40 and they do think this is my last chance to do something like this is exactly what brings into focus this idea of failure. Quitting is not an option. They can't quit, because if they quit now, they'll never get this chance again. We've suffered so much together, and we've supported each other through so much and helped each other so much. It definitely has created a bond that I don't know if ever will be broken. Mr. Haddon, 155 even. Mr. Haddon, 155 either. It's been a big year. And I'm seeing people who were supporters of the idea or people who thought, oh, that's a great idea, but you'll never pull it off, come up to me and pat me on the back and say, man, I can't believe that you guys did this. I can't believe you're here today. It's, uh, it's overwhelming. Mr. Doyle, 145.4. Mr. Steve all made weight, but Steve's opponent came in nearly five pounds over. Four pounds over? 149 with shorts? Yeah. Good fellow came in pretty light, and his opponent showed up four pounds plus overweight. And when you're talking about only 145 pounds, that's a lot. Um, you know, the guy hasn't suffered, he hasn't been dehydrated like, uh, like good fellow has. So that's kind of, it, it's a piss off, you know, it's a, He's already had a huge disadvantage. This guy's already got four fights and about eight years experience. Steve's got one year and he's smaller. And you know, this guy didn't make weight. I mean, the guy's got experience, he should have made weight. Disappointing as a fighter to have somebody not make weight when you, you know, kill yourself to make weight. And then there's a bit of an advantage there to his side that he's bigger and perhaps may or may not have gone through the same kind of pain to get where he got to. So 
I'd love to be 150 pounds right now. Steve can choose not to take the fight, but that leaves his dream unfulfilled. He decides to go ahead with the fight despite the disadvantage. And then I signed a contract with another professional fighter and to make a legal obligation with somebody else's name there that's got four pro fights. Uh, it's amazing the turn to the anxiety. It was immediately, my God, what the hell am I doing? I'm a 42-year-old accountant. I've been training at this for a year in my part-time. Every moment of my part-time, but part-time. It's a surreal feeling to get that piece of paper to say that you're a professional mixed martial arts cage fighter. Like, it's, it's definitely going up on the wall. It's definitely getting framed. It's going right next to my Chartered Accountant Diplomacy and my Canadian Institute of Chartered Business Value, Valuator Diplomacy. Uh, I'll be equally as proud of this, I think, as I am of those. In 12 months, each of them have undergone a complete transformation. There is nothing left for them to do. Tomorrow, they become pro fighters. right now. <laughs> I'm nervous enough for both of us. Steve has the first fight of the night. Boyd and Rick will be backstage focusing on their fights, so they won't even get to see Steve step into the cage. Peter does just an artist job of wrapping your hands. It's a really kind of powerful feeling, actually. <sighs> Training is over, and it's time for Rick, Boyd, and Steve to have their first pro fights. Steve is up first. He's a 42-year-old chartered accountant with one of the world's biggest professional services firms. But tonight, he's becoming a professional MMA fighter. He's endured a grueling year of injuries and pain from the training, along with mocking and strange looks from business associates during his journey. But quietly went about his personal and professional business and earned the right to fight. Steve's been focused the whole way. He's been battling some injuries, putting his time. He's going to step into the cage, and, and he's going to fight. Here's a guy that has lots of money. That's not even an issue. So he's not doing this for money. He's doing it because he legitimately wants to fight more than anything in his life right now. Keep your hands up. Okay. Push him on that cage, get a single, put him on his fucking back, start pounding him, okay? You don't understand what I'm saying? Okay. You know what you're supposed to do, right? Just go f***ing hard to kill this guy, okay? Put him on the cage, put him down, smash him. Okay, listen to my voice. Win or lose, at the end of the day, I'm gonna shake his hand, give him a hug, and say, you know what? You're a warrior. He is. Go, Steve! Nice 
knees. Her knees are. That's it, buddy. Why not right there? Watch the guillotine. Grab that hand, grab that hand, grab that hand, grab that hand. That's it, grab that hand. Grab that hand, Steve, you got it, he's got nothing there. Let him gas his arms, let him gas his arms. Pull that arm. Pull that arm. Good defense, buddy, good defense, good defense. Knee, Steve, knee. That's it. That's it, go that knee again. bravely against his more experienced opponent, but the knockout is serious. Boyd and Rick are backstage and have no idea what just happened to their best friend. Next time on Cubicle to the Cage, word spreads to Boyd and Rick about Steve's knockout right before their big fights.